Hello, it's Catherine. Welcome back. I'm going to do Friday's Reads and this is the last Friday's Reads of 2016. So for this I'm going to feature a story from A Snow Garden by Rachel Joyce and other short stories and this is called The Boxing Day Ball. Now I'm not reading the whole story out because it wouldn't fit, it, you know, it's quite long. So I've, I've sort of going to read parts of it but hopefully it will flow for you um, so here we go reading glasses at the ready it was too muddy to cross the fields and the girls hadn't a car between them they had no choice but to make their way along the lanes they would add almost an hour to the journey the land shone icy blue in the moonlight as if the colour had been chilled out of it Sometimes the girls saw a light in the distance, but mostly it was just dark and cold. There were ten girls, including the twins, and they moved in a weaving column of ones and twos. A few carried paraffin lamps. Patty Driscoll had a torch. Now and then someone would holler out a song to keep the rhythm going. Something like the Christmas number one that year, Return to Sender. And the others would pitch in way with the chorus. Their breath hung in front of them. They carried their dad's shoes in bags and gripped their collars to their throats. Maureen imagined mice, half frozen, poked down under underground holes. There would be rats, voles, shrews, worms, spiders, rabbits and badgers. Foxes even, just beneath her feet, right where she couldn't see, all poised and waiting. Patty Driscoll shouted, It'd half kill her, the blinking walking, and Maureen smiled, but only to herself because even if she was like a stranger, she knew he didn't laugh at Patty Driscoll. She felt a swell of love for them, all of them that night, even Patty. The factory girls had watched her every morning on her way to school. She had not been allowed to mix with them, not even as a child, though she knew some of them by sight. Then one morning they had called, hey, you, and asked if she wanted a ticket for the Boxing Day Ball. She had assumed it was a joke. She had assumed they were laughing at her. Everyone goes, one of the twins had said. It's the best night of the year. No, she had told them. No, thank you. But once the idea was in her head, she had not been able to get rid of it. Her parents would not approve. I think not, her mother would say. I think not. When the girls called out and asked her again a week later, she said yes. Yes, she would like a ticket. The words were out of her mouth before her head could stop them. That's it then, they all said. We'll go together, Maureen. So they knew her name. They were not laughing at her after all. She had kept the ticket hidden in her coat pocket. She would not go. Girls like Maureen did not go to the Boxing Day Ball. And now here it was again. The little throb of excitement. As if something were about to change. Maybe it was the nip of gin Inesta Hughes had offered her from a bottle at the start. Maureen had not tasted gin before. And she could feel the sting of it still like a hot hole at the back of her throat. The Boxing Day Ball took place every winter. Maureen knew that much. People came from miles around, all sorts of people, not just the factory workers and the farm hands, but also the university boys home for Christmas, and even the young professionals if they weren't yet attached. Charlene said she was going to land herself a nice office lad this year. She was fed up with them good-for-nothing tinkers and farm boys. The only parties that Maureen had attended were those of her mother's friends. She had met their sons, all stiff partings and knitted pullovers. You are not going to the Boxing Day Ball, her mother had said, and that's final. But Maureen had stood her ground. I'm 18 now, she said. You can't stop me. She could not look her mother in the eye. Had she asked her father's permission? Of course not. He was a gentleman, softly spoken. Always apologising for not being well. Always saying he was a burden until it got tiring to keep saying, Oh no, no you're not. The dance was already underway. A queue spilled from the door and several boys loitered in stiff jackets that were either too big or too small, smoking cigarettes between fin pinched fingers. Patty Driscoll and Esther Hughes shifted impatiently, trying to get a better view of the young men who would later partner them, trying to get the first picture of the hall. The doorman was dressed as Father Christmas. 
He wore a red velour hat and fake white beard, along with a red jacket that didn't quite button over the swell of his stomach. Ho, 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 he said to the girls catching their fingers. Have we been a good boy? Or a good girl, even? <laughs> Sorry. Doing it again. <laughs> ho, 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 he said to the girls catching their fingers. Have we been a good girl? He asked Patty Driscoll's breasts. Um, oh, get lost, Santa, she said, pushing past. She didn't say get lost, but I'm not going to say what she did say on camera. Most people were gathered in groups close to the walls. The farm boys in what looked like borrowed jackets. The young men in full dinner suits and bow ties. Groups of girls clustered around the tables. When they greeted one another or picked up their drinks. When they offered their laps as seats. And even when they laughed. They did it with exaggeration and sideways glance to check who might be watching. Maureen recognised a boy with oiled hair from one of her mother's friend's parties. She thought the young man was called Howard. If he wasn't, he ought to be. She looked away before he could spot her. She had noticed someone else from the start. She couldn't miss him. Whilst the other couples danced in groups and pairs, he jived by himself in the middle of the dance floor. There he was, the boy, still dancing alone. He was like a stranger in the room, a person from a foreign place who did not understand how things were supposed to be done. She kept watching and she was aware of time passing and she smiled. So long as she could keep him in her eye line, that was enough. Maybe he sensed her watching because he stopped suddenly and looked back at her. Then he threaded his way through the crowd and stopped so close she could feel the heat of his skin. He stopped with his mouth pointed towards her, pointed towards her ear and lifted a small lock of her hair so that he could speak to her and be heard. The boldness of the gesture sent prickles of electricity shooting down the length of her neck. Maureen held her breath as if to stop time. So there we go. That's a, an excerpt from the, one of the books out of the one of the books one of the stories out of A Snow Garden by Rachel Joyce. And hope you've enjoyed that. And see you again for Friday's Read Short Stories in 2017. Bye for now!